All right, now let's go to the second game. Uh, it's the finals of International Shogi Tournament in 2008. Uh, the finalists are playing black is Shunjie Tang from China, and playing white is Sergei Korchiski from Belarus. Okay, here we go. First up, Tang plays pawn to 7f, and then Korchiski plays pawn to 3d. Now pawn to f. Okay, here white makes a bishop trade. Silver recaptures. Silver 2b and gold 7h. Okay, this opening is called white's one move loss bishop exchange strategy. Now silver 3c and silver 7g. And well, this is one of the newest opening strategy in the professional shogi war too. So it's amazing that they know the newest theory of shogi. Now white plays silver to 7b. And at this position, black usually plays Silver to 3h, going for rapid attack when black is playing against white's one move loss bishop exchange opening. Uh, but here, Tang didn't do that. He moved the gold up to 5h, you know, gold 3b. Uh, king goes for castling to 6h, pawn 8d. And now he moves the silver to 4h, and pawn 6d, and pawn 4f. Okay, it seems they're going for strategies called reclining silver. So silver to 6c and silver to 4g. Pawn 7d. Now king goes ahead for castling to 7i. Knight develops to 7c. Right now silver to 5f. Okay, now this structure is called a reclining silver because uh, you see it's as if the silver is reclining on some kind of a chair. Now gold to 5b. And black pushes the edge pawn to 9f trying to enlarge his castle. White replies, and black pushes the right edge too, and white simply replies. All right, now pawn to 3f, and here white makes an interesting move. Rook to 8a. All right, now it seems white is going for a strategy called right hand king. You see, black has already moved the king to the left side, so he's going to castle his king to the left, but black hasn't moved his king yet. And now that he moved the rook to 8a, we could suppose he's going to castle his king to his right. All right, so pawn 6f, and here, as I've said, the king moves to 6b. All right now, gold to 6g from the right. Now he has made a Yagura castle, but using Yagura castle in a bishop exchange opening sometimes has a bad point. You see now the right side of black's camp is a little bit too unguarded from white's bishop drops. All right now, king moves over to 7b, so this is a right-hand king. It's a real defensive strategy. Okay, black's king castles in. Now pawn 5d, pawn 2e, and pawn 8e. Knight develops to 3g, and silver comes over to 4d. Okay, so now black can go for the second file. He pushes the pawn up to 2d. Pawn takes it, and rook recaptures. Uh, but well, at this position, white has got his chance, because you see, the rook has moved out of black's camp, so the rook's defense here is now gone, and uh, this rook on 8a is doing a pretty good job, exerting an excellent influence to the left side, protect the knight. So here, white could simply make a counterattack by, for instance, bishop to 4a, really powerful attack on the knight, or uh, maybe he could also push the pawn up to 5e opening up the battle in the center. But well, anyway, Korchiski didn't do that. He just dropped the pawn to 2c. So he has lost his chance, rook to 2h, and then white played pawn to 3e, going to attack on the knight's head. But well, this is not a very good move, because black can make a counter push of the pawn to 4e. Okay, now white is in a trouble. If he runs, he loses this pawn. So what he did here, he ignored that. He took the pawn on 3f, attacking the knight. But well, black takes the silver, white takes the knight, and uh, well, this position is basically good for black. Black has an option of simply saving the rook to here, for instance, and it's still good for black. But well, black went even aggressive. He went ahead and took the pawn on 4c. Right now, here, white can't take it with the left goal because the rook can promote. So he has to take it with the right gold, which leaves the king alone in here. Right now, still, black doesn't save his rook. He dropped another pawn to 4d. 
Alright, well, this time, maybe if I could just take in this rook now. Uh, after that, uh, black takes a gold, gold recaptures, black will drop another pawn. Uh, well, if I can't take it, because this bishop drop is too powerful, so the gold will go back. Okay, gold drop, pawn drop, saber drop, but here, this bishop drop is a really powerful defense, and I think this is a really difficult situation. But well, what didn't go for the rook, he just took the pawn. Right now here, black dropped a bishop to 2f, forking the gold and the promoted pawn. Okay, now once again, I think white has an option of taking the rook, although I'm not sure about the consequence. Let's see, black will take the gold. Well, black's attack is powerful here, but how about this bishop drop here? Really cool sacrifice. Uh, if he takes it with either the king or the gold, uh, let's say the gold, you see he can make a check with the rook, forking the bishop, and this position pretty much looks like a good position for white. But uh, how about uh, when he dropped the bishop? How about calmly move the king over to the 9h? Maybe black is fine. So, uh, anyway, white didn't take the rook here. He saved his gold by dropping pawn to 3e. So now black takes a promoted pawn to 3g. Okay, now the situation is really good for black. His rook is now saved. His castle is strong. White king is weak. Right now, white dropped the dangling pawn to 4g. But it's not a big deal. Black make a really good attack, pawn to 6e. You see the bishop is in a really nice diagonal now. But if white drops a knight to 5e, well this is a good move. It blocks the bishop and simultaneously attacks the gold. But here, Tang keeps on going, zero to 5c, really aggressive. He's attacking these two squares at the same time. Well, uh, here, White has an option of taking the gold, of course. But the bishop's diagonal is now open again, so uh, if he does that, I think black can ignore the promoted knight and simply go ahead and take this pawn. He'll lose another gold here, but well, this pawn's attack is now faster, so I think uh, black is winning here. Yeah, it seems black is better. Uh, but anyway, White didn't take the gold here. Instead, he moved to knight on 7c to 6e, taking the pawn. But well, this is not a very good move. Black can just take it. Uh, now white took the gold here. But this and black can simply recapture it. And the pawn will take the silver. Uh, but look at this. The really critical square 60 is now open. So pawn drop to 60. Now this is it. He doesn't even take this gold just goes for the king. White dropped the bishop to 5e, but it doesn't work. Black took the silver and drop it to 6d. Now this king is over, so Korczyski resigned here. Now if you want to see the following moves, uh, if he runs, bishop takes the bishop, and then bishop drop. You can take this rook, and rook drop. And it's all over. Nah, if he takes it with the bishop, so he takes it. And if he goes this way, bishop drop. And uh, if the king goes this way, bishop drop. So it's all over. Okay, so this was a really exciting game. Tang made a really powerful and really fast attack. It was pretty cool. Okay, so thanks for watching. Hope you've enjoyed the game.